All right, so welcome back to the channel. In this series, we are comparing Stanley to Lee Nielsen. Now, if you know anything about those two brands, you know that they are very similar. So we're gonna take a look at a few of them side by side, take a deep dive into their specs, see what was changed, and maybe discuss why. Stick with us. So I have to apologize again. As I was filming this video, I remembered that I was supposed to do the next video on the number fours, but I have a good excuse again. So I am trading the Lee Nielsen 51 for the Stanley shoot board. So I needed to do this video so I could send that plane off to its new owner. Um, so I apologize, but the next video will be on the number fours. I hope. Um, and then keep an eye out because I will be doing a video on this board and the Stanley plane that'll be separate from this series. This is video number three in the series. In this video, we are going to be looking at the Lee Nielsen 51 versus the Stanley 51. They call this one a shooting plane. I believe they call this one a shoot plane. Now, a little disclaimer before I start. I am not going to be showing these planes in use side by side. I already did a review of the Lee Nielsen um, versus the Veritas. If I remember, I'll put the card in the corner. But mainly because I don't want to use this Stanley plane for two reasons. It's worth a lot of money, and there's a part on it that breaks very easily. We'll get into that when we start looking at the different specs, because Lee Nielsen fixed that problem. But I don't want to use this plane, you know, mess up the logo or have that part break, because then after that, you're left with what? A plane for parts, and I, that's just not worth the risk to me. Um, I don't know anybody that actually still uses the Stanley Shoot plane because of this this major issue that it, it had and has. But, all right, um, wanted to get that out of the way, so let's dive into the specs here. So, Lee Nielsen, as you're seeing, and it's, it's the same thing that's going through all of these videos, they are beefing it up and making them better. Why? So, the very first thing is they made this out of ductile iron. So, if you drop this on the floor, the body is not supposed to break. That doesn't say that anything in here won't, but the body's not going to break. Stanley, it's just cast. So if you drop this on the floor, boom, you've got a crack, you've got a break, you've got something bad going on. So that's the first major change that they did. Now, because Lee Nielsen is beefing things up, of course, the weight's going to increase. I don't think they said, let's make this plane heavier. It's just that's what happened because they made the parts better. So Lee Nielsen is nine pounds, four ounces. Stanley is six pounds, 13.7 ounces. So this is just under three pounds heavier than the Stanley. Now, lengthwise, the Lee Nielsen is 14 and in, 14 and three quarters inches. The Stanley is just over 15 inches, so just a little bit longer. Um, I don't think it makes that big of a difference, but. All right, so I'm just taking a minute to tell you guys that I started something new. Um, it's called Buy Me A Coffee. So if you're enjoying the content and you like what I do, there's a link in the description where you can buy me a coffee. I'm also offering memberships. So if you are newer to woodworking and you want somebody to bounce ideas off of, get advice, feel free to check out the memberships there. Uh, last thing is I'm being told that I need to start doing that like and subscribe thing. So like and subscribe. Height wise. So this is this part right here. When you go to the website, they call it width and I get it, but I call this height. So height wise, the Lee Nielsen made it taller. So the Lee Nielsen is three and a half inches. The Stanley is only three inches. Width, so this is in the track. They're both two and one eighth. Now iron thickness, let me set these down. Iron thickness is another big change that's very common across all the Stanleys. And all of the Lee Nielsen's. There we go. Well, I guess we should look at the caps, huh? <laughs> so the caps are virtually identical. Lee Nielsen's is a little bit taller. And it's also just slightly wider. You can see that there. I mean, we're talking maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Not even that, to be honest with you. It's just that little tiny corner. Backs, virtually the same. So there's those. Now back to iron thickness. So the Stanley irons are a sixteenth of an inch, and the Lee Nielsen's are an eighth. So I love the thicker iron, especially for a shooting plane, because the thinner the iron, the more chatter you're going to have. When you beef it up, you're going to have less chatter less chance of it flexing, more support. And for a shooting plane, there's a lot of pressure going against that iron. So I'm very happy that Lee Nielsen beefed up the iron. Same with the chip breakers. You're going to see this common in the old Stanleys too. They have this bend. Well, when you get to the Lee Nielsen's, they're connected like that. 
Iron width is the same. I should have talked about that too. So iron width, they are both two and three eighths. Last thing about the irons, Stanley used laminated steel and Lee Nielsen used A2. So the edge is going to last longer on these ones than it will versus the laminated steel. Tote angles. So when I do these videos, I look at everything. So the angles of the tote. Angles of the totes are the same. They're both at 20 degrees. The mouth skew on these. So they both have a skewed mouth. That is also at 20 degrees. What you'll notice here, there's no circle up here. But when you get to the Stanley, they put a circle there up at the top. And um, I'm honestly not too sure why. I kind of like it. I, I think it kind of looks cool, but I don't think it was added afterwards. I believe this was original to it because I have seen other shoot planes that have this there. But yeah, so that's one thing Lee Nielsen changes. They took that circle out. So let me take off the totes and I will show you those side by side. So here are the two totes. Now, Lee Nielsen, they made it like a sixteenth of an inch thicker than the Stanley. So it's just slightly thicker. But they did make it taller. So let me get these lined up and I'll show you here. So they made it that much taller. Also, the other common thing theme that we're seeing with these is the angle of the tote going forward. Lee Nielsen, excuse me, Stanley has more of a forward sweep on it than the Lee Nielsen does. I'll show you this way. So there's that. So Stanley has more of a forward sweep on theirs, which I think the Stanley is less comfortable. I'm learning that I'm, I guess I'm supposed to hold it like this. I'm not supposed to, but anyways. So the Stanley totes are smaller and they have more of a forward lean, which typically you want more of a forward lean because it's putting more pressure towards the mouth, which is helping you push the plane. But I haven't found any issues with the Lee Nielsen tote and the angle that they have it at. And then, of course, they kept the same shape. Um, this Stanley is rosewood, and then this Lee Nielsen is cherry. This is where you're going to see the huge difference in these two planes. So if I put them back side by side, right away you're going to notice the frog. This design on Stanley is very, very weak. So let me show you why. It's okay. <laughs> so for the Stanley frog, that's how it is made. The blade rests here, the blade rests here, and the blade rests here. Now, it's only held on by these two screws. Those two screws go through to the other side and screw into the frog that sits on the back of this piece. When I first tried to assemble it, I thought the frog went on the front, which to me makes sense. Put the frog on the front so it's got this whole, this whole back supporting it. Nope, it goes on the back. So those screws go onto the back and it hooks onto here. So if you think about it, it's got all this pressure on here and it's just these two little screws holding it on. So that's exactly why I don't want to test it because that's a very common break in here is having this piece break out of the back. So Lee Nielsen, what they did is they fixed that. They turned it into their traditional bedrock style. So let me take both of these frogs off and I'll show you those. So here are the two beds, frog beds, side by side. There's the Stanley, which is weak, as you can tell. I mean, this huge open gap right here is an, also a huge issue. I don't understand why they didn't connect it. I guess they were trying to save on materials or something. But, but Lee Nielsen, again, they fixed that. So Lee Nielsen's, that's the traditional bedrock style that you see because the frog has all of this support. Okay. Where the frog on the Stanley literally has just the two screws because it sits on the back. It doesn't sit in the front where this is support. It sits on the back. It just blows my mind that a company that made such great planes as they did really made a mistake on this one. So the two frogs, here's what they look like. <laughs> 
So this is the most significant change that Lee Nielsen made. They made this a real frog. I don't know what this is. I honestly don't even count this as a frog. I just count it as a piece of metal because it's... <laughs> It doesn't make any sense to me. So, Lee Nielsen beefed it up. Made it the traditional bedrock style. So there they are. <laughs> I do have, I do want to mention on this. Um, this part was actually broken off. There was a huge chip out of here that was broken. And my buddy repaired it. You can't even see it anymore. Look at that. He did, a, he did a fantastic job on this. Um, I don't know if he wants his name to be that public because I don't think he does this as like a, a job. I think he just does it as a hobby. But if you're in the Can I Have It Facebook group, um, in the Sellers Collective, I made a post about it. So you can get his name there. When it comes to the angles, the angles are the same. So I put these on here and they're both still at the 45 degrees. So the angle stayed the same for those. When you look at the bodies... They're pretty much similar. I mean, because you can see here, they have the supports pretty much in the same place. One at an angle, one at an angle. Um, these ones, the tote rest was like a 16th of an inch off, so I'm not going over that. So here again, we see that Lee Nielsen took a Stanley design and made it better and beefed it up. Now, in the prior videos, I was able to say that Lee Nielsen took a winning Stanley design and made it better. I can't say that they say that about this shoot plane. Um, I'm not sure if Stanley was the first one to make it metal. I'm sure there were wooden ones. So th they might have been pioneers to their credit. They might not have had anything to model it after. But this was a failed design. That's why you don't see many of them because they weren't made for a long time because they kept breaking. So Lee Nielsen fixed that issue by changing the frog making it the bedrock style instead of whatever you want to consider that style. The other thing Lee Nielsen did is they beefed up the iron. Um, they made it an eighth inch thick. They beefed up the tote. They made that just a little bit taller and a little bit thicker. But everything else they pretty much kept the same. So there were parts of Stanley's design that were winning, but that frog is a huge no to me. If you find one of these in the wild, buy it. I mean, that, that, that's a given because it's a collector's item, but I, I definitely don't recommend using it. Um, so, all right, the next video will be the number fours um, in the series. I might do the video on the Stanley shoot board and the Stanley shoot plane before I do the Lee Nielsen comparison because I'm really excited about that, but we'll see. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Like and subscribe. Have a good one. <laughs>